Right, welcome back to the channel. I've had about a month away from doing CBs, been absolutely flat out making the Synad meters. So uh, massive thank you to everybody uh, for buying those. Uh, it's been a really, really big success for me, which is super duper. I still do have a few left. Here we go, we've got this one here in orange. And um, as I did promise, I would put some of these up for international sale. Um, so if people are interested, the last sort of six I've got have now gone on to eBay. So um, I'm not going to be making any, uh, many more of the actual meters, um, purely and simply because they just take a long time for me to build. And uh, I've uh, I've got it in mind to do some kits uh, from then on in. So uh, keep an eye out on the channel. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know when they're available. It shouldn't be too long. Next couple of weeks, two or three weeks, there'll be some kits available, a cheaper price, obviously. Um, so you can actually build your own board up and then pop it in any case that you like and uh, So that that's going to be on the way I'll, I'll, again all the sales of those are going to be going for eBay So if you look on my eBay channel, I'll pop a link in the description uh, And there's six of these available like I said probably that's going to be the last six that I actually build up as full meters I actually use this one in the video when we're testing these radios. So we've got to move on to doing a bit of uh, work for Ringway Manchester for Lewis and two of these radios that he sent through look really, really interesting. We've got the Fanfare 190DF, which is an AM radio, which some of my American viewers might recognise. And it comes with this very, very strange uh, mic plug. Look at that. <laughs> it's all metal. That's a very military looking, isn't it? And look at the size of the, the size of the lead. Look how uh, chunky that bad boy is. And it's a... Uh, the microphone on it is quite unique with a channel indicator on the front the channel selected dial which i really like that on the side of it although i could see you could probably knock it off channel quite easily so i doubt that many of my uh, english british viewers have um have seen one of these before um but uh, certainly a lot of my american viewers will have seen them before so there's lots of videos done on the ham international i am going to do that one on video on video very quickly um because uh, they're they're useful to know how to tune those up. There's a good service manual for these, and so they can be tuned. I don't know if this one works or not, but for today's video, we'll have a look at this Fanfare 190DF. I don't know anything about it. I'm going to see if I can get a schematic for it. And first off, we'll turn it on and see what it is, what it isn't doing. All right, there is a uh, Sam's Photofact manual. It's volume number 184 for this radio, but as usual, they want 30 odd dollars for it. Um, so I found out a little bit of information on what things do inside the radio, which should speed things up a little bit. There's also um, some, one of these CB modification documents, which also lists uh, the the information there as well. So um, if you need to do one of these, the top one, that's your uh, that's what your controls do. So hopefully they're on the board. I've not I've not looked yet. I've not take the lid off. So let's do what we said we we're going to do. Let's power it up. Well, first impressions looking okay. We've got a, a wobbly volume pot here, look. So that's going to need looking at. That looks to me like it's going to need replacing. Um, but we are getting transmit. We've got the um, channel selector working okay. The channel, the little dial on the side. Let's put that over there. So that's going up and down okay. And we've got, if we take it up to, I do like that. It's really nice to use actually. Channel 40. I love the on-air, uh, that's glowing red. You can't really see it, it looks white on the camera, but that's glowing red on the air. Look at that. And um, like I say, we've definitely got a bit of an issue. There's a bit of a loose connection on the plug. I think I'll give that a look at, but we're looking okay, I think. Um, it should just be a, a tune-up video, this one, hopefully. But I do love the um, that power meter, the SRF meter there. Lovely. And um, this one has got the, the badge plate, the fan and badge plate on as well, which is nice. And the front of this looks in really good condition. The whole thing is, I mean, this thing is from 1978. Very good. Right. Um, we'll put the SDR on. Uh, well, actually, we'll put the Randy on, see if we're getting any any noise coming out of it. So we're going to transmit on the Randy away from the radio. One, two, one, two. Yep, that's fine. And we'll go the other way back to the Randy. See what we're getting. One, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah, good. So we're getting TX audio in both directions. I think the main problem with this radio, um, I can't say what it's like on frequency just at the minute, but I think the main problem is this volume control. That's uh, 
in pretty bad way. I mean, the, the plug on the side of it does look to be a bit wobbly, but it seems to be working okay. Right, okay. Well, we, we know it's transmitting as well. Did I show you that? I'm not, not sure if I did. Um, on the power meter, let's just swap you to the power meter and show you that. There we go, we're on the lower scale. Sorry, the middle scale. So we're doing four watts, bang on four watts there. You can just see that the limited diodes, this must be on a 100% modulation and adjustable inside this, so uh, you can just see them limiting it there on the peak. So uh, the, the on the front of the radio, tone button seems to work. We get the get this to get some hiss. That seems to work as does the noise blanker. The PACB switch just needed a little bit of a, a clean. I think that um, that was uh, uh, one of the reasons it wasn't coming on in radio mode. Uh, although I couldn't see a PA um, socket on the back of it. I could be wrong, but um, I do love this uh, wood effect. You see this on uh, some of the other radios, don't you? The uh, what was the um, yeah, I did a video on the, the Krako KCB 400, which has got the, the similar wood effect, although this looks a lot more like proper wood than, than that. And so if you've not seen the video I did on the Krako, go and have a little look, because that's a fun AM radio as well. Nice. Uh, and they're a lot more available. I've not seen these come up before uh, so much in the UK. Um, but um, they were very omnipresent in the United States, as I'm sure some of you guys will remember. Okay, there it is with the covers off. And it looks a very well made radio, doesn't it? Really, really nicely made. I mean, look at the noise blanker there right in the middle of that separate component. Um, first thing I'll do is, on these switches, these look quite dry. So we'll get some switch cleaner in these switches first and then we'll address that potentiometer volume control on the front because like I say, I think this is just gonna be a straight up alignment. So um, we'll use the contact cleaner, get in there. Um, might just have a little blow around with a bit of uh, dust spray. And they can get a little bit dusty in there. And then we'll give it a dose of uh, the, I use the WD-40 electrical contact cleaner and we won't go mad with it because it does it does actually take the lubrication out of the switches. So you do need to bear that in mind when you're cleaning up switches. So just the slightest little puff of it, uh, and that's actually ungummed those switches quite nicely. I can feel that it's actually ungummed them. And these switches are self-cleaning. You know, when you see these slider switches with the brass contacts, in theory they shouldn't need to be cleaned because the contacts are self-cleaning and over time with them not being used they tarnish uh, and all you very often need is a very light puff of air and uh, a little bit of WD-40 um, electrical cleaner. If you haven't got the electrical cleaner a tiny little drop of the normal WD-40 is also okay as well. So I think that's probably sorted those switches out and they certainly aren't gummed up anymore. So let's sort out the volume control. I also noticed that the the pins on this and the contacts are tarnished. They're really quite badly tarnished. They were actually black. That's how badly tarnished they were. If I just show you there, this is the on-off switch. Can you see the little contact there? This pin, I've just cleaned it with the pen. This pin was black to the touch. Now it was switching on and off, so it must have been just making contact, but it's always worth checking these connection points. The, on this radio, they were absolutely black. And I used one of these little microfiber pens there uh, to get in there and scratch away at that and clean it off and then a bit of switch cleaner as well so that's something to watch for on radios particularly when you get these switches these switches are very popular in, in old walkie talkies as well the on off switch and you're not going to get um, a replacement one of these switches for instance so we do need to try and see if we can repair this rather than replace it it's going to be well, we could replace it obviously with a with a, a switch but I'm trying to avoid that kind of work on this radio today can you see we've got the same tarnish on the pins of this connector as well, that black there. And there's also a couple of screws missing from that. So I'll, I think it's all working though. So but I am going to just use the pen on those, give them a clean up and we'll see what they look, look like. And then we'll pop this back in and see if we fix the volume control problem. There we go. We'll scratch away at the 
and see how that comes off. There you go, nice and shiny. So we'll go and do down all sides and the ends. And we'll also get some switch cleaner in the socket on the radio and plug it in and out a few times. Right, those pins are a lot cleaner now, all cleaned up. And the screws, I think these might be Japanese screws or uh, Imperial screws, they're certainly not metric. And so the only thing that I could safely do was put a plastic M2 screw in there. So it's a little bit, uh, it doesn't really, it's a bit tight obviously, but it stops this from pulling out with the socket. So that's as good as I could do with that really. I haven't got any Imperial screws here at all. So uh, perhaps I could do with getting some, but there we go. So that, that is a, a hopefully a good fix for the socket. So let's see if that, um, for the plug. So let's see if that volume control is now less scratchy. Right, so we certainly seem to have got a bit more, we got got rid of the scratchiness. We've still got a bit of a wobble on that knob, but the scratchiness is gone. But the the socket at the back of the radio, it's only working if I've got the socket slightly out like that. When I push it in, we lose the uh, we lose the audio, which sounds to me like somebody. I mean, it looks like someone's been in there because there's no PA socket. That's gone. See the PA socket there? That's actually been taken out. So I think someone has played around with the wiring on that. So let me just have a little look and see if I can work out what's going on. There we go, usual scenario. The person that wired this socket up originally had no clue what he was doing. I've changed the socket anyway because that one's quite tarnished. So we'll pop a new, we've popped a new socket back on it and we'll just uh, pop the decoupling capacitors back on it and pop that back in the back of the radio. Uh, the PA one has been removed but I haven't got the wiring schematic so I don't know wh where to pull that off from so I'm going to have to leave the PA socket off for now. There we go, we had a mismatch of screws in the back of it as well so I've put some M3 cap heads, that is an M3 thread on the back of that back plate and we popped the decoupling capacitors on there so let's just connect the speaker up and make sure it uh, it switches in and out as it should do. So right, I've just checked the TX frequency on the SDR, that's all good and the modulation is good as well uh, it's probably a little bit near 100 percent for me but um we do a test with mick uh, i'm going to use the tiny sa to uh, align the receive i'll do the transmit afterwards just peek it um but it's on four watts anyway so uh, i'm not too overly concerned but i'll perhaps just go through that anyway um what we don't want to do is go and end up going damaging cores um in these and that's always a risk so if the radio is producing the right amount of power and it's aligned properly uh, there's no need to go stuffing your trimmer tools in there because even a, a good quality ceramic trimmer tool can do damage to the radio if you're not careful. So, particularly on older radios as well. Right, let's put the Tiny SA into this and give it a signal. Okay, so we've got a signal going in from the Tiny SA. You can hear it here. And that's a 100 microvolt level signal. Okay, so... Let's start dropping it down and we'll use our little chart. So we'll drop it down 10 dB. That's minus 77, which is 31 microvolts. It's starting to go now. That is uh, minus 87 dBm, which is 10 microvolts. So we'll go down in ones now. That's still doing quite well. That's minus 97, which is three microvolts. Minus 98, minus 100 dBm, which is 2.2 microvolts. Still hearing it there, that's minus 107, which is one microvolt. Minus 114, we've still got it, that's 0.4 of a microvolt. I don't think it's gonna do much better than that as it stands. So what we'll do is we'll just go through the receive side on the Synad uh, meter. We'll put it into microvolt mode. Uh, if you haven't got a Synad meter on an AM set, you can do that with just a normal analog volt meter. And um, I'll tweak that up a bit as best I can. 
Um, what I'll do is I'll see if I can highlight where those receive parts are on the radio. So if you do have one of these yourself, uh, you you uh, you know where the receive bits are. I normally take a photograph of the inside of the radio, but when when they're rare beasts like these, I don't tend to always do that uh, because I probably won't get another one. <laughs> so um, I just rely on my video work and go back to that if I need it. So let's um, identify where the receive parts are first. Right, I hope I got the angle right. So for receive, you're looking at L101, which is there. 102, 103, and then you're looking at 105, 106, 108, which is there, and then you've got 109 and 110 there. So, do all those. I'm going to do them in that sequence, um, and uh, we'll see if we can bring the receiver up a little bit. It's, it's to, be, to be honest, I think it's pretty good, um, but I'll just bring it up a little bit on the uh, voltmeter on the audio output and uh, we'll see how we go from there right and to be honest that was pretty good I did bring up a little bit though so that's good it's come up a little fraction um, now we've got a 100 microvolt signal on there we're going to adjust the VR102 which according to my little crib sheet here is the receive meter adjust so let's uh, adjust the meter up so there we go we're just shy of the 9 it's a lovely meter that isn't it um, so we'll carefully adjust this up and get us bang on the nine. There we go. We can just give it a bit of a wiggle backwards and forwards. It's not probably been moved for a long time. I think we'll go with that. Just just on the edge of the nine maximum. So who knows where nine is? Is it at the start of the block, middle of the block, or the end of the block? Answers on the postcard. Okay, Squelch is VR302, which is this one here. We've got a, the 100 microvolt signal still on. And you can see I've got the Squelch at full and it's squelching it out. If I back it off just a little bit, it's coming in. So I think it's there or thereabouts, but I want to give this a bit of a move just because, as you can see, it's over the years, it's been stuck in that same position. So we'll give it a good move backwards and forwards. And then we'll just never had to adjust the squelch with my finger we'll just get it so it just comes in there we go okay so with the squelch on full we're at 100 microvolts let's see um, where it's coming in we'll go up just one there we go that's up at 66 minus 66 dBm which is 112 microvolts so if we drop it back down one there we go, that's working fine on the top end. Let's see what it's like on the low end. All right, so we just did the squelch for its threshold position. And we're at minus 116 dBm, which is 0.3 uh, of a microvolt. So we'll just go up and see where it, uh, that's minus 115, which is 0 0.39, 0 0.14, and two, it's half a microvolt. There we go. It's coming in at a minus 110, which is 0.7. So it's sensitive on the low end as well. And uh, there's your signal there. Just under the squelch, actually. We'll just turn that down. So, yeah, that's absolutely fine. The squelch is adjusted absolutely spot on. I don't think there's any bad capacitors in this set. I mean, if you look at all these capacitors, they all look really healthy. There doesn't look to be anything coming out of any of them. Um, not that many capacitors in here to recap anyway if you had to but uh, it's nice audio as well punch audio out of it so I don't think there's anything wrong with the capacitors on this board so we've done the receive we've done the receive meter um, there is a mic gain adjust but we'll just do the um, the transmit lineup so we'll just get back to the diagram and I'll show you what the transmit lineup is on this radio Okay, so for transmit, we got 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 118, 119, 120, and there's also one on the antenna socket there as well, um, which they don't show on this uh, diagram I've got. Anyway, so that is the tune-up. Uh, like I say, this is already doing 4 watts, so I'm not going to stress too much about this, but I am just going to go through and just uh, peek it and um, 
and then we'll test it on the watt meter but like i say it's uh it's doing all right for me as it is anyway now that's the maximum we could get on transmit um for the transmit power meter adjustment it's the vertical pot there vr103 it took me a little while to find where that was but that's the tx power one i, I won't show you that on camera because it, it's it doesn't really need adjusting but if you do need to adjust it that's where it where it is for four watts the AM mod is okay on this actually um the there is an adjustment for it on vr301 but uh i don't know where that is i've had a really good look around the radio and i can't see any adjustment for it which i i can't believe there isn't <laughs> and it'd certainly be the one thing most people would adjust on this radio but it's actually okay according to my checks on the spectrum analyzer anyway so yeah that is it for this then that's all done and dusted it's working nice so there's a few little faults with it wasn't there there was the uh, volume switch the actual on off switch also was and that was intermittent so it wasn't staying on and the volume control was scratching that's all sorted out now um obviously the socket at the back there had been wired incorrectly by somebody i don't know who um, but other than that there wasn't really anything else wrong with it just needed a basic tune up and these buttons cleaning um, so all in all a really nice set um, what I will do obviously and we also put the screws in there and clean the pins on that too didn't we uh, what I will quickly do is just take this microphone apart and just give that a little give the switch inside there a little clean and then just to check over uh, before we flip it back on its wheels and put the covers on and um, maybe see if we can get hold of Mick if not we'll just do our usual little test with Tyler and um, just to give it the once over and uh, we can put this one to bed so uh, let's do that. Right, we'll just uh, give the speaker a quick test. We'll plug it into the SIGGEN. Give it a range of tones. All right, sounds good to me. As for screws to hold the case on, they are actually uh, like a self-tapping type screw. Um, I haven't, I hadn't, didn't think I'd got anything, but I've had these in the drawer for probably 35 years. I got them from a company I used to work at. They came with me when I left and they've been in the drawer ever since. So uh, they come in handy even if you never need them, don't they? So there we go. Those screws will do nicely. And um, I think the original screws were kind of a gold color, but I guess can't be choosers. How about that for the inside of a microphone? <laughs> Look at that. Wow. There's an IC in there. Can you see that? That chip on its back. It's obviously to drive the... You, you've got the uh, selector on the side there. So obviously to drive that and that's the encoder for it. It's a beast. That's a lovely bit of engineering there. It really is. That's all contained within the microphone there. That is, the, the, for me, it's the microphone is the star of the show as much as the, as the radio there. So what we'll do is we'll just give it a little bit of a squirt in there. Work that in just a little bit. I mean, to be honest, the modulation was actually absolutely fine on it anyway. I couldn't sense there was anything wrong with the mic and this encoder was working fine. It looks like a sealed unit, so I don't need to get any thinking now I'm certainly not going to fiddle with this because it is working and um yeah you might struggle to get another one of these from somewhere and the cable is very robust um I'm not surprised there's no problems with the cable as is the connector I mean that's a that's the sort of connector I mean I used, I used to work in the crane business and um we used to use uh, the Harting connectors which are a similar construction to these all metal body with a very rugged plug contents within and these are, uh, yeah, they're good. I mean, they needed cleaning, as you could see. So, yes, I think we'll just um, pop that back. I, I have got some, um, the screws are tad on the rusty side, on the top of them. That happens, it's, it comes from the sweat from people's hands off the back of the mic. And um, it, over time, they go rusty. That's why you see that. Right then, I'll pull that back together. If it needs new screws, I'll put new screws in it. But I'm quite happy that the microphone is okay. I might give a bit of a snow foam to the lead just to bring it up a little bit. It should uh, clean up nicely. The case screws cleaned up nicely. Just again, just use the, the red fibre pen there just to clean those screws up. 
And what I always do on cases, particularly on old cases, just to help with them cracking, is a little bit of white lithium grease, just a tiny little dab on each screw as you pop them into the casing. It can be the difference between the screw cracking the casing when it's next removed and not. So on older cases, I always do that. Bit of snow foam. There we go. They always clean up nicely the microphone leads, don't they? As you can see, that looks pretty darn good. And this looks nice and clean too. Certainly a lot cleaner than it was. And uh, that's the important bit, you see. That's the bit that you're holding on to. And this does feel really super substantial, this thing. And um, it's okay, let's, um, let's pop it on. I'm, my 3D printer's running in the background, so we're not gonna hear anything on AM with that going. Um, but uh, we'll uh, certainly uh, do a radio test. That's yeah, looking pretty nice now. Cleaned up some of the front controls as well. Just brought it in nicely and uh, love the uh, love this on the air. <laughs> it looks a lot redder in reality. It's like uh, one of those old TV shows are on the air, isn't it? But yeah, a radio of the mid seventies, and it does show, doesn't it, with the. Uh, the wood effect that was such a popular effect wasn't it and um lovely little radio all round absolutely fantastic so um we'll wait a bit later and then we'll we'll do a an, an, an on the air test with it and see how it performs right summer is finally here and uh, it's late evening now about 7 30 and uh tyler's back at base we're about two and a half miles away across the fields here and uh, i've just got the mag mount on top of the car a serial mag mount and uh, we've got a base station loft antenna and this is somewhere if you've not watched the channel before where we do quite often do a test from so uh, we'll just do a quick test with, with Tyler and, and see how it goes he's going to be recording at his end on his mobile and I'm recording here. Right we'll see if Tyler's around. Hi there Tyler this is your dad. Um, I can hear you, okay. There's a little bit of noise around on the channel, Rob. Um, there is sometimes, like, um... There is sometimes, like, um... Like, a little, like, flash or static, but most of the time it's fine. Yeah, Roger, I'm hearing you, okay. Okay, do you want to give us the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog? Yeah, yeah, it's good, isn't it? It's really decent. We haven't got any other um, radios to test today. It's just this radio that. Radios to test today. It's just this radio that I want to test. Um, they've got a relay Manchester, you know, in the in the radio, and uh, we've been doing for about a month, but we're trying to get back in to get a few tests in set up. So um, I'm glad it's sounding okay at that end there. Uh, so you definitely uh, you give it a thumbs up then, Tyler. It sounds we're getting used to this though. It sounds it sounds alright to you at that end. Uh, what was that last part? Yeah, does it sound alright to you? Is it sounding okay back at base? Conditions are tough at base because we've got some interference, but is it sounding okay? Uh, yeah, I can make out what mo like most of what you're saying. Okay, just out of interest, there is a little button on the front that says NB, noise flanker. What happens if you push that in? You, can you still hear me? As I'm talking, push that button in that says NB, noise flanker. Uh, and do I disappear? If I disappear, obviously push it out again. Um, does it make any difference? Uh, where's that button? It's, uh, it's on the front, on the silver button. So I think it says NB, the noise blanker. Or N NB, or yeah, noise blanker. Have you got the button on the front of it? Um, there's a button that says NL slash B, is that it? Yeah, Rod, yeah, it says press that 
I think it's pretty much the same. Okay, I should actually work there, you know, and that's made quite a bit of a difference. Okay, then, by the way, that's great. I think we've confirmed that that radio is working okay. Uh, certainly as good as a radio for time, it's going to be working without a complete recap and overhaul. Um, it's certainly working better than it was earlier on today. So, um, with that, thank you for that. If you're out there, Tyler, you can now get on with your evening. And um, we'll have to get further down. Cheers again, Tyler. We'll speak to you in a bit. Bye. That was good of Tyler to help out today. And uh, yeah, really, really pleased with how that's come out. Um, you can see if you're doing this professionally. I mean, that's took me probably about five hours to sort out this afternoon, including the microphone. So a lot of work goes into doing repairs on these old AM sets or on any, any vintage radio, really. And um, well, you just see how useful the tiny SA is for a signal generator. You don't need a silly boat anchor or anything massive like that. You just use a tiny SA, the perfect okay for that. And um, basic equipment. Um, you don't need a Synad meter, obviously, for the receive side for that because it's AM. Um, but if you do need a Synad meter, remember I have got a few more for sale, as I've already mentioned in the video. So if you want to pick one up, I'm not going to be making many more of these because they're very, very time consuming to make. Um, but I just wanted to make sure people that needed them got hold of them. So there's six on eBay. I've already sold one today. I put it up there and it sold pretty much straight away. So if you want to pick one up, go onto my eBay, which is linked in the description, and I'll put it on the screen now. Go onto eBay and pop your order in. In a couple of weeks, two or three weeks' time, as I've said, there will be some kits available. Um, but I really want to keep the kits for overseas buyers rather than UK buyers because obviously overseas buyers have to pay a lot more in terms of shipping for the assembled meter. So the idea was to put a kit, some kits out for folks and to keep the prices down a little bit for them as well. So anyway, uh, I hope you've enjoyed that. Thanks again if you've ordered a meter. Brilliant stuff. Uh, we can all eat well this month. <laughs> and uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please pop a like uh, down below. And if you're not already subscribed, please make sure you do because I've gone over 12,000 subs now and I'm really chuffed about that. So anyway, I'm glad you've enjoyed this video. I know I've been away for a while, but hopefully I'm back for a while. Okay, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks again.